Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to another episode of an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, Alara made her presence known to the rest of the tribe. She had been forming a plan with the Bone Keeper to essentially attack their nursery again. She was actually leading one of the killer Berginas straight over here to the babies. But just as she let out her war cry, right on top of the stump over here, that's when the Bone Keeper turned on her. The Bone Keeper literally turned her back. We don't even know where the killer Berina is anymore, so that means Alara is all on her own in this war. We figure it's probably some sort of test. But were Alara any other creature, I'm sure she would be feeling the sting of betrayal right now. In fact, she might still be deep, deep down. But Alara is a little bit different from most creatures, too. I don't think that's really going to stop her. She's not going to slink off in defeat, and she's certainly not going to try to figure out where the Bone Keeper went. It's more likely that that feeling is just going to fuel her, turn her into an even more formidable beast than she already is. So needless to say, all of the creatures of the nursery are probably shaking right now. They know exactly what's coming for them, and unfortunately, all of our strongest warriors have already left to help Longshot. We still do have that other Baryina over here on the grasses too, though I think they may have moved on as well. A little bit deeper into the darkness, maybe? They must know that there is plenty of creatures here looking to take them down. So, I wonder if they would have actually heard the call too. I did notice that one of our Dodomingos spawned over here, so that means they're probably echoing that war cry. Maybe carried all the way down to Laloon? She would be the one to recognize her sister's voice, so she would be the first one to turn back. She knows that she's leaving Jericho with a very heavy burden, though. She and Kit are some of the strongest in their tribe right now. With five on their side, they're pretty much doing most of the damage against the killer Berginas. Unfortunately, Jericho himself is a little bit weaker. Not to mention, most of our creatures over here are getting very, very close to the ends of their lifespans. Adeline in particular? She only has two days remaining. Oh my gosh, Addy. She's probably going to end up passing away out here, actually. I'm not sure if she's even going to see the end of this battle. Oh, I wonder if Longshot would notice if he would see that Addy seems to be slowing down for some reason. You're not looking so good, Addy. He's not used to seeing her so slow like this. They traveled absolutely everywhere together after all. Oh, I still remember the day that they found Longshot over here in the grasses. So he's probably pretty concerned too, but I feel like she would probably end up brushing him off. After all, she knows that Aqua is going to be one of the only creatures left here who can take down the Baragina. So, she has to have her full, undivided attention on the killer Baryina for sure. She doesn't want her to fall victim to his claws either. So, as we bring Laloon up into the clearing over here... Oh? As the leeches attack our creatures? Oh my gosh, Morganite! Oh, those pesky leeches! Oh my goodness! The clown koi weren't protecting you anymore, I guess. It looks like they passed away, and that left a little bit of open room for the leeches to get to you. Well, least awkward has noticed now. There's still time for us to save you, and this might even be part of the reason why these two are so distracted. So go ahead and pick that leech right off of her. Very, very carefully, mind you, because we don't want you sticking yourself with any of those spines of hers. We'll probably want to have Morganite push Longshot behind the stump too. That way he's a little bit further away from the danger, of course. Maybe we should even scoot Morganite up here. If the stream isn't safe anymore, then we definitely want to make sure that nobody's too close to the water side. Who knows if there are more leeches trying to swim their way upstream. So awkward, you better jump right in front of Morganite as well. Let's actually have you go ahead and pick up the extra nest over here. Mr. Dodomingo. Oh, baby Dodomingo, even. It looks like they're probably coming over here to the permanent nest. So yeah, it's pretty clear that he is definitely sending those war cries out to the rest of the tribe. Or at the very least, he's echoing the beautiful songs that he's hearing. So go ahead and destroy that broken nest for us. And then Vixa, why don't you actually let out a few war cries of your own? She's probably trying to protect Longshot Jr. with everything that she's worth. Maybe even as a way to be like her father. She must remember those strong cries in the distance from Jericho too, so she's probably trying her best to mimic them right now. 
All right, Mr. Bluebird. All right, so we know that the Bone Keeper is definitely watching. This must be about the area where the Killer Berginas run off to. I mean, I'm not sure that's any solace for you, Alara. It's still too far away for her to help you. But one last mighty roar from you, Vixen. One last mighty roar to try to send Alara packing. Of course, she's not going to be too intimidated by a baby of all things, but you can still try your hardest. Mars, you might as well go ahead and collect those extra acorns while you're at it. We know you're not going to be going anywhere after all. Let's actually have you come over here so you can stand right beside Awkward. You two are going to be making some sort of barrier between the babies. I guess it was a good decision to leave Mars behind after all. If not for him, then every single one of our strongest warriors would be completely gone right now. But Luna's on her way. And you know, I think Kit is probably going to end up following her too. Kit and Laloon have been working side by side for so long, and they've really only survived this long because of that. So, I don't think that Kit is going to leave her now, and I guess it's even more fitting considering who they're dealing with. Alara was the one who started this entire mess when she tried to take down Kit when she was just a baby. So in a way, this could almost be revenge for her family. Revenge for Clownfish, who was the one taken down by her poison. So jump ahead of the nursery if you can. We could actually have Kit come right over here, and then Laloon should be able to settle down right beside her. Now, she knows that her sister is very, very troubled. Clearly, these two don't see eye to eye. But I'm not sure that Laloon's first instinct would be to hurt her. To be honest, she's probably afraid that that would make her just like Nicole. I mean, she could clearly end everything here just by pushing Alara straight into the waves. But that would make her truly no better than the Bone Keeper. So I think to start with, she's probably going to try to reason with Alara. To show her that this isn't the only path that she can take. The Bone Keeper clearly deserted her, so this is her chance to make a new life for herself. They can take down Nicole's influence together, and they can be a big happy family again instead of fighting all the time. But Alara's in so deep now, I'm not sure that she would be willing to be reasoned with. I suppose just to use up her turns, we could go ahead and pick up the grass over here. Maybe she's trying to tear away at the weeds so she can find the killer Baryena again. Maybe she figures the Bone Keeper's just hiding too well in the grasses out here. Surely you're going to help me, right? You wouldn't just leave me to flounder here all on my own against this army. She's strong, but she knows she isn't that capable. Interesting, too, how the Clown Coy seem to be swimming up to her now. Almost as if they're trying to convince her as well. So tonight is going to be her last chance to make a decision. Now let's head on back to the warriors to see if maybe they can find that other killer Bergina too. I suppose that means we should probably send Jericho out to scout. We'll bring him right up here and have him sniff around again. Any sign of the Bergina at all? There's a bunny hopping around here, so I would imagine that you're probably going to meet your end very soon. Let's have Jericho follow the bunny. Yep, there's the Baryena. Alright, so it seems like he's almost lost interest. It must be because we have so many creatures on our side now, he knows that he really doesn't stand a chance against us. The question is, how are we going to set ourselves up so we can actually attack on the next turn? I think we're going to need a little bit of help, actually, Longshot. Maybe we could have Adeline skitter her way over here, staying very, very close to the healing fruits because it's probably the only thing giving her energy right now. We could have you come over here, too. There we go. That lights up a little bit more of the path for us. So we can have Longshot try his best to sneak around. He knows this area a little bit better than the others do anyways. So he probably knows all of the best hiding spots, too. He's had to do quite a bit of hiding out here in his time. Jericho, let's have you sit right up here. That should keep you safe from his claws, at least. Which one of the birds stole something this time? Was it you, Mr. Bluebird? The one way back here in the darkness. Ooh, that is mildly concerning. That means something is probably lurking back here, too. We didn't leave any bunny meat back there before, did we? You know what, Morganite? Let's actually have you come on over here. If you heard that bluebird crying in the distance, you would probably want to make sure that there's nothing dangerous out here, too. Should we have her go a little bit further? I know she's still about to have her baby, five days remaining before she has to give birth. So we don't really want her to put herself in too much danger. 
but so much is going on right now, I feel like she would be really, really on edge. She doesn't want anything sneaking up on her baby from behind. So, come on over here, Morganite. You could actually use this stump to see even further into the darkness for us. Yeah, I wonder if maybe... Maybe there's a wanderer out here? Maybe somebody's collecting the bunnies while we're away. And if that's the case, then I would imagine Vix is going to be very, very offended. She considers bunny counting to be her task after all. Alright, so let's go on back here. Aqua, where are we going to put you? You're probably actually far enough away that the killer bear Yina won't be able to reach you on this turn, so maybe we could have you stay right there. You're out in the open too, so that could be the perfect way for you to lure the bear Yina back into your trap any further away and we might not see him again. So for now, just lay low. I would have you maybe claw down one of these berry bushes for an extra snack, but I think it might be more beneficial for you to leave that right there. That would lure the bunnies your way too, after all. And a couple of extra bunnies certainly couldn't hurt. That's another good way to bait the bear Yina your way, so we'll see if that bunny decides to stay around you. Let's go ahead and have Adeline try her best to clear out a path behind her. That way, everybody should be able to escape if need be. And then all that should be left is our third and our newest family, Acadian and Pernille, who've actually just had a little healthy baby of their own. Nunu is not only perfectly healthy, but he's also one of the strongest creatures in this entire island so far. So it's probably giving peace of mind to Pernille especially. I kind of feel like her greed... Her envy is going to manifest in protectiveness for her baby now, since everything has really changed for her. But Acadian, let's have you go ahead and grab this bunny for us. Pick up the meat so you'll have a little bit of extra food to feed your baby. Then I think we're going to have Pernille come on over here so she can breed again with Acadian. After all, we'll want to make sure this family is really thriving. Who knows what could spawn out here in the meantime. I wonder if their conversation right now is whether or not they should return to their respective families. I mean, they could stay out here all alone by this train, but that leaves them very, very vulnerable. But is that really any better than going back to the main part of the camp? I mean, Pernille knows that her sister was not about to give up. She probably figures there's a pretty good chance that Alara is bearing down on them right now. She also knows Alara would never accept Nunu. To the Bone Keeper, this family is probably made of traitors. So, Alara's not so sure that they should give up their place right behind the Forbidden Clearing. I think at most, she'd probably be willing to come on back here to the Healing Fruits, since these two don't seem to have any in their grasp. Let's go ahead and have Pernille clear out the grasses around here. That way, her baby will have a little bit more room to play. With the amount of bluebirds that they have circling over their heads right now, I know that she's going to be very, very cautious. So, I think we should be ready to skip the day. Let's just sniff around one more time just to make sure, though. Just to make sure that none of those wanderers are sneaking up on you, Morganite. Things are still as quiet as can be. That does have me very, very concerned, though. I just don't really want to send her off all on her own. I mean, with all of this drama taking place right now, she really needs to stay here to be next to her baby. So, we'll see what happens to Alara on this turn, and let's go back here just to make sure that Baryina doesn't get to any of our tribe mates. These should all be far enough away. Oh no, but he didn't take the bait, Aqua. I don't think I even heard the killer Baryina grab a bunny, so this is going to be a lot harder than you thought it would. Oh! Okay, I guess I missed that. It looks like the Baryina does have a little lunch. So the bear Yina is very, very much distracted right now. Unfortunately, the other killer bear Yina is still nowhere to be seen. You have definitely been deserted, Alara. It doesn't look like the Bone Keeper's coming back. That being said, I'm sure she's watching you very, very closely from the opposite shore right now. So this is truly your one and only chance to strike. Yeah, I don't think she would be so willing to listen to Laloon, but I wonder if maybe her words would distract her? Or not distract her, but confuse her, maybe. This thought that she could be anything but another part of the Bone Keeper's army. She is our embodiment of wrath, after all, so she's never been too good at thinking ahead. And this idea that there might be some diverging paths from all this mess? That she could maybe actually make a home here? 
That must be truly warring with her current mission, and I feel like she'd only be more likely to lash out because of it. So as all things tend to go full circle in these sorts of stories, maybe she would actually lunge toward Kit again. With one last war crime, one final cry to show that she means business. To prove to herself, perhaps, if nothing else, that she's willing to follow the Bone Keeper to the end. She'll cry out and she'll lunge straight at Kit. Only for a Laloon to get in the way. To knock her back, perhaps? Straight into the waiting fins of those clown koi, where she'll struggle to keep her head afloat. Teetering so high on that throne of hers, it was only a matter of time before she eventually stumbled straight off. But it looks like she's been granted one extra day, so it's not quite like Baron and Nicole. In fact, Laloon might even have the chance to save her again, if only she's willing to listen, if only she's not too proud to fight against her sister's help. So shocked as ever, we'll bring Laloon over to the side of the water, and I suppose we might as well bring Kit over here too. Maybe she would even let out a few cries of her own, trying to get Alara's attention as she struggles in the currents. This harkens all the way back to when Kit was just a baby too, when she was so willing to trust every single creature she met. She didn't even see Laloon or Alara as a threat back then, and even now she's so willing to open her heart to those who probably don't even deserve it. She still thinks that Alara could change. It all depends if she reaches out to take Laloon's paw though. And it all depends if the Bone Keeper doesn't get involved tonight. So Vixa, with all of this going on, I'm sure you're still going to be letting out your growls too. Oh my gosh, even though Longshot Jr. has actually grown his second gem, so technically he could probably take care of himself now. But I still think he appreciates you watching out for him. In fact, he's probably still cowering right behind the stump over here. Let's have him go ahead and crack open these acorns, though, because that's at least one job that he can definitely take care of. Meanwhile, Awkward is probably starting to wonder where his mate ran off to. Let's have him skitter back here as well, as Morganite jumps on top of the stump over here, so she can hopefully figure out what made that bluebird so noisy the other day. I kind of feel like Awkward probably didn't even notice it at all. Maybe Morganite is going to have to explain what she's doing. Let's have her go ahead and clear out the grasses over here, too. Really? Oh, that was probably this bluebird over here. Or maybe not. Maybe it was this one, then. Clearly, the bluebirds are making a feast out of every last one of the scraps from the Baryginas. I guess the only one left is probably the lunch that this Baryina caught. Yeah, it looks like yours is still safe. So that must have been Alara's Baragina. Alara's Baragina is literally just sitting here munching on bunny snacks like he's eating popcorn or something, watching all this drama unfold. And to be honest, I'm not sure that anything Alara does can truly appease the Bone Keeper anymore. Now as if the tragedy of Alara wasn't going to be enough, Adeline is now on her very final day. She only has one day remaining, and it really doesn't seem like she's going to be able to spend it by Aqua's side. Aqua is so focused on the Sparina right now, and you know, she could actually land in a good attack. If we could just have somebody light up the space for her. Maybe a long shot, if you could jump over here. After all, I'm sure Addie would shoo you off in that direction. She knows that you could move much more easily than she could. It's pretty fitting that she has such a slow movement speed right now. It really shows her age in a way. I kind of wonder if the journey itself injured her. Maybe being so old, a twisted paw or an infected scrape just never healed properly, and now she's paying the ultimate price. So while she might not be able to see Aqua, she's going to hear that battle taking place. Let's have Aqua jump right down here so we can actually see the Killer Baryina again. The Killer Baryina has 10 days remaining on its lifespan, so go ahead and land your very quick attack. Then you're going to have to jump all the way up here. So, you know, I suppose you could actually spend just one last night with Addie. You didn't even realize that she was getting so close to the end of her lifespan. Yeah, let's have her skitter on over here. That way, Adeline won't be all alone on this day. We'll have her go ahead and clear out the last remaining grasses. She'll probably leave this healing fruit behind too. As much as I'm sure that Aqua would beg for her to eat it. 
Addie would rather leave it here for one of their younger generations to indulge in instead. So maybe a new baby can actually be born. She knows how difficult it was for Awkward and Morganic to have a baby after all. Maybe this is going to be their chance to truly make a big happy family together. So I wonder if she's going to ask Aqua to let them know about the healing fruit too. But for now, Longshot, let's have you stay right there for one extra turn because Jericho is going to jump down here as well. You land in your attack, buddy. So that leaves seven days remaining in this killer Bergina's lifespan. Jump on back here. And Longshot, I think you're just far enough away. But all the same, maybe we should have you skid around back here. That way you can be right next to Adeline too. As your stand-in mother... I'm sure this is going to be just as hard for you tonight, and we're going to have to make sure that we can dig up one of those roots, too. We certainly don't want her becoming one of the Bone Keeper's soldiers. Now, I think I'm going to have Perniel come on over here. That way, she can open up the pathway to the Forbidden Clearing with this room. She's not going to do much more because I still don't think she wants to leave. But this is more like a fail-safe than anything. She's probably explaining as much to Nunu right now. And, you know, we might as well give him his gem, too. Maybe the same color as uh, Zacadian right here. The yellow on the sides and then the purple right in the middle. Since he does have that mask, I kind of assume that he has a little bit more to do with the cycle of rebirth anyways. So I guess that would be very fitting. Be a just in case, Nunu. We're only ever going to use this path if some true danger comes to our home. This will take us straight back out to the main part of camp, where you're sure to find some family there. That being said, if you ever run into anybody with the scorpion tail, you know to be very, very careful. I suppose Perniel would probably explain as much to him that her side of the family isn't exactly the nicest. Acadian has some very, very loving family members that they both know would accept him in an instant. But Nunu is going to have to learn to stay away from the scorpion's poison. At least the Bone Keeper learned their family's secret. So one last time, let's go ahead and skip the day. We'll zoom in straight on you, Alara. Straight on you and the warriors over here, just to make sure. Oh. How interesting. It seems the Bone Keeper might actually be offering you a choice. Either come with me and become a part of my eternal army... Or reach out your paw and grab the loon's claw on your own, forever shunning the bone keeper in her ways. Oh my gosh, this is perfect. It literally all comes down to this. So what do you think Alara is going to choose? Is she going to go running straight into the waiting jaws of her mother? Or is she actually going to try to change? Can Alara even get past all the terrible things she's done? Or would she just revert back to her old ways eventually? And then, of course, there's the situation with Adeline, too. She passed away last night as well, so we'll have to protect her next. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!